ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते Translation, I shall now declare unto you in full this knowledge, both phenomenal and numinous. This being known, nothing further shall remain for you to know. Purport, complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world, the spirit behind it, and the source of both of them. This is transcendental knowledge. The Lord wants to explain the above-mentioned system of knowledge because Arjun is Krishna's confidential devotee and friend. In the beginning of the fourth chapter, this explanation was given by the Lord, and it is again confirmed here. Complete knowledge can be achieved only by the devotee of the Lord in disciplic succession, directly from the Lord. Therefore, one should be intelligent enough to know the source of all knowledge, who is the cause of all causes, and the only object for meditation in all types of yoga practice. When the cause of all causes become known, then everything knowable, everything knowable becomes known, and nothing remains unknown. The Vedas, Mundaka Upanishad, says, Kasmin Bhagavo Vigyati Sarvam Idam Vigyatam Bhavati. Krishna is teaching Arjuna. The duty of the Guru is to teach the disciple. Therefore, this word Guru, now this has entered the English language also. My computer Guru. That even you'll find in Indian culture, there is music Guru, dancing Guru, even the thief has his Guru, how to steal. Even you'll find the truck driver he keeps the cleaner. They call the cleaner. I don't, they're a system. They call the cleaner. I don't know why. But he cleans the truck, but they're usually not very clean. So anyway, this the man, the driver, he becomes the guru of the cleaner. The cleaner of today is the driver of tomorrow. <laughs> because he gives knowledge. Computer guru means he teaches but particularly, guru means ajnana timirandhasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshuran militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha. One who removes ignorance by giving knowledge. There are some folk stories of gurus who touch their disciples, <laughs> who then feel some electric shock running into their body, who become unconscious, and when they wake up, they feel they're enlightened. This is folk story. I mean, got nothing to do with reality. Guru teaches by speaking. But then again, not exactly just like a course book, like an academic book. But it is a soul-to-soul -soul interaction. The soul cuts out the ignorance. It's not simply an academic fact to know that I am the servant of God. Not simply stating, but one actually has to have this false ego which cuts, which blocks the knowledge coming. That has to be cut away. Therefore, the beginning is that one should be at least humble enough to understand that I need teaching. Then he can begin to learn. So, exchange of knowledge is going on. Krishna is introducing here. First of all, he told Arjuna in this chapter, he told him, now listen. From time to time, the speaker may say this. Just like we hear that prophet. Sometimes he'll say, just, he would, he'll hear on that cassette, just listen, listen carefully. Sometimes you'd see a devotee in the class, they're looking here and there. Sometimes in the class, I've noticed that sometimes our devotees, they become very interested in their fingernails during the class. <coughs> As if they'll get tr transcendental knowledge from their fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> transcendental knowledge means not looking at your fingernails, but keeping your ears open, listening very carefully. <coughs> so Krishna first of all told Arjuna, you listen, why? Now I'm going to tell you something very important. What is very important? If you see the news, 
they see some very important now election in India. They're thinking this is very important. Or there is a very important cricket game going to be played. This is nonsense. There's no such thing as an important cricket game. Because just by its very nature, cricket is not important. The whole material world, nothing is important. Everything is washed away in the course of time. Just like you may think, there is a very important political meeting. You may say, very important political meeting. But in a thousand years' time, will it be important? Will it seem to be of any importance? Will anyone even know? So what is actual importance? That we have to see everything in perspective. Just like in the morning, in the class, was discussing what is the actually important thing the important thing is to know who we are, what is our position in the universe. Not what is our false... By considering falsely what is our position, we think the cricket match is important. This means we have taken something to be important which is not important. So Krishna is here teaching that which is actually important. Again we come to the point, complete knowledge. Now Krishna says, I'm going to teach you everything. Can you imagine? Someone will say, I will teach you everything. Does that mean that by hearing Bhagavad Gita you'll get knowledge of atomic physics, how to cook, how to climb mountains? Will you get that knowledge? Not from Bhagavad Gita. You may get from somewhere else. But when Krishna says, I'm teaching you fully knowledge, it means he's giving you the full existential position. What is the important knowledge? What is the actual position of the universe? What is our position in it? Full knowledge. Satchit Ananda. One of the symptoms of a liberated soul is he is full in knowledge. What does that mean? Does it mean he becomes in full knowledge as much as God? God means he knows everything directly and indirectly, past, present and future. There is one verse in this regard in the Bhagavad Gita where Lord Krishna says that Vedaham samititani vartamanani chajuna bhavishyani chabhutani I know everything past, present and future. Bhagavatam also says that he knows uh, what is that verse? Janmadhyasya yataha what is that? Vyad itras charteshv abhigyasvarat directly and indirectly he knows everything. Krishna knows everything. From the inside he is Paramatma from the smallest and He's from the inside looking out and outside looking in as Mahavishnu. So he knows everything. Now when we say the liberated soul, also he comes to the platform of full knowledge, it doesn't mean he knows everything as Krishna knows. Just like someone asked Prabhupada once, that, do you know how many windows there are? You're supposed to know everything. He heard this. So do you know how many windows there are in the Empire State Building? So Prabhupada said, I only know what Krishna reveals to me, what I need to know. He could ask Krishna, just like another time, someone asked, so I heard, that someone had asked Prabhupada, and the Paramatma in the heart is standing up or sitting down. So Prabhupada just closed his eyes. Now he's sitting down. <laughs> so, it doesn't mean that someone who becomes a devotee of Krishna, then he fills his head up with all kinds of useless knowledge. But he knows what is the important thing. Actually, if, you un- if we understand these very basic points, I am not this body, an eternal spirit soul, I am the servant of Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If you know that, then you know everything. Your life is perfect. You know all that you need to know. We have so many classes. If you come here to Vrindavan, you'll find Tattva Sandharva class, this class, another class, this. If all of this is just to bring us to understand I am not this body, I am eternal spirit soul, I am the eternal servant of Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead. I am not God. If you know this, then you know everything. I am not God, Krishna is God. Because everyone in this world is in the illusion, I am the supreme, I am God, I am very great. You see our Indian guests are here, they are thinking we are preaching this now. I am supreme, I am God. No, we are not. We are not God. We are not the Supreme. We are servants of God. We should know this very clearly. Again and again and again we should hear because our illusion is so great that we are thinking. We are studying Bhagavad Gita so many years and still we are thinking, I am very important. No, I am not important. 
Krishna is important, I am his servant. This we have to understand. Jeev Krishna Das, Ibishas, Kodaleta Ardukanai. You want to solve all your problems? I just told you. Here's a formula. All your problems solved. Just understand. Jeev Krishna Das, and Jeeva, and the spirit soul, and not this body. You understand that immediately. So many problems finish. Then, who am I? I am the eternal servant of Krishna. Who is Krishna? The Supreme Personality of God. And just understand this, all your problems finished. Do you believe it? Bhakti Rao Thakur says, Ebisha, follow this, understand this. Just try to understand. Why this Bhagavad Gita class? Why Srimad Bhagavatam class? Just to understand this. If you understand this, you understand everything. Means, actually you understand everything. You understand why the wind is blowing. Why people are fighting. Why there is repeated birth and death. All the important things. Uh, all the different things. And what is the latest cricket score? You may not know. You are not very interested to know. Because that is an unnecessary, peripheral, useless piece of knowledge. That is all in the category of uselessness. Uh, that, what is that? Bhagavatam. That Lord Krishna says in the Chatashloki Bhagavatam. Ritertam yat pratiyeta na pratiyeta chatmani. That anything, any so-called knowledge which is not in relationship with me is all nonsense, it's all maya, all useless. So when it's said that we know everything, that means we should know what are the important things. There's no use to accumulate endless volumes of knowledge. Sometimes people, many people, they become, even sometimes our devotees, they become attracted there's so many big, big books and so many different subjects. In this way, the material world appears to be an interesting place. We can become interested in astrology and faith healing and natural healing and predictions. This is a very interesting thing. What does Nostradamus say about what's going to happen? There are so many different things you can become interested in, very many interesting things. But we have to see is this actually useful for me to understand? Whether Nostradamus says this or says that, what has it got to do with understanding Krishna? Now, it's not that material knowledge is not useful. And we have to see. Anukul yasya sankalpa, pratikul yasya varjanam. Everything which is favorable in Krishna's service should be accepted. Everything not favorable should be rejected. So a devotee of Krishna, he should know some things also, just like if you have to cook for the deities, then you have to know how to cook chapatis. If you don't know how, you can't do it. So they may say that's material knowledge. But uh, that is something which is used in Krishna's service. That you may learn to cook chapatis. And if you already know how to cook chapatis and many nice things, when you come to Krishna consciousness, so much the better. And if you already know so many computer skills when you come to Krishna consciousness, very good. Anyone knows, please come and see me. I'll give you some service. There's many things to do in Krishna's service. So it's good uh, to have some knowledge. Uh, but it's not essential. It's even if you have no, even if you don't know how to read and write, if you know how to chant Hare Krishna with full faith, then it's better if you have 10 PhDs, 20 MSCs. Sometimes you see people, they do their whole life. They get a PhD, they get another... And as you meet people, four PhDs. Professor, 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 professor. Four times over. But, what is the actual value? <coughs> Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj, he couldn't even sign his own name. But Bhakti Stan Thakur said that all the knowledge in the world can be found in one grain of the dust of his lotus feet. Because he knew Krishna. And one who knows Krishna, he knows everything. It means that he knew Gorgi Shaldas Babaji Maharaj knows what is the purpose of life, how to attain it, and that everything else outside of this is useless. And actually, even though he never studied Shastra, because he didn't read or write, if anyone came to him, uh, then immediately he would preach to them. How could he preach if he never studied? Because that knowledge was revealed to him within his heart by Krishna. Now, coming back to the other side, knowledge, material knowledge. So you say, well, is all material knowledge useless? Yes. Unless it's used in Krishna's service. That Prabhupada gave the example, you have zero, 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 and zero, 
The total is, anyone good at mathematics? Zero. <coughs> but if you put a one before it, then it becomes significant. So that one is Krishna. So if you have some knowledge that's used in Krishna's service, that's actually used in Krishna's service, that's very nice. Just like if someone is, he's been trained as a scientist. Now, mostly we find that scientists, the way science is taught in the modern age, they, they, the tendency is to have an atheistic world view. But if a scientist takes to Krishna consciousness and understands Krishna consciousness, and he understands then that all the scientific knowledge he has, actually that should be used to understand Krishna. And he meets other scientists and preaches and speaks to them in such a way that they're impressed by his scientific knowledge and says, and you see all this? Well, the conclusion is, you should surrender to Krishna. Of course, with scientists, the highly covered over living entities generally. So you may come to the point of surrendering to Krishna after some stages, may not immediately. But that, if you have such a knowledge, you can preach to such people because they're generally very puffed up that I know so much, even though actually they don't know anything of any real significance because they don't know Krishna. They don't know the purpose of life. I mean, we all know the story of the boatman and the scholar. The big, big scholar is drowning in the ocean, drowning in the river, and the boatman asks him, so, do you know Krishna? No. So you've wasted all your life. But that knowledge, or even that intellectual capacity, that can be used in Krishna's service. Idam, that Narad Muni has recommended. Idam ipungsas tapasa shutasya svishtasya suptasya chabuddhidatiya says that if you are attracted, if you have intellectual capacity, use it in Krishna's service. If you have artistic capacity, that can be used in Krishna's service. If you like to do different austerities or study the Vedas, whatever that tendency of yours is, that will come to its perfection in glorifying Krishna. So we see that some of our devotees, they're doing that, that Prabhupada said that our Krishna conscious movement is not exactly a, a what people understand as a religious movement, but it is a scientific, philosophical and cultural movement for the re-spiritualization of the world. So we see some of our devotees, they are uh, doing studies of quantum mechanics. You may think, well, what has that got to do with Krishna consciousness? The answer is nothing, unless it's used for preaching to others that, you see, this is quantum mechanics, and you go through this, you see, this can be explained in terms of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, actually they're doing, Srimad Bhagavatam gives a similar model, how we can re relate quantum mechanics to the Vedic worldview, and come to the conclusion that you may be very intelligent, but you can't understand anything of the whole picture unless you understand Krishna. So that's very good. That study of quantum mechanics, if you bring that, if you use that to bring big, big scientists to Krishna, very good. Or you like to paint. And we have so many, you see now our Vrindavan temple recently, so many nice paintings of Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rup, Sanatana Goswami. That is very good. Because the painter is going to paint anyway. But if he follows what they're normally painting nowadays, then it will be totally bizarre what they call modern art is just some depraved nonsense it's, they say you're expressing your mind it just shows you're insane <laughs> what they're showing oh just madness how you you get you go hmm and then like that. and just I saw recently in England no, someone was telling me that uh, they had an exhibition of modern art at some in England and they sold some paintings at very high price, some few thousands of pounds. And afterwards they told, well this one you paid 10,000 pounds for, this was done by a four-year-old who just had some, he was just given something to play with, some paint brushes. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one was done by a chimpanzee. And you paid 10,000 pounds for it, because they can't tell the difference between a four-year-old painting and a, and a so-called big artist painting. Madness. So you take the same person with an insane mind, who likes to paint, and you train him. You see, this is the form, Radha, Krishna, paint this. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, paint this. So the same propensity, or scholarly propensity, you like to study. You see, we have books. This is not uh, 
This is not some foolish fairy stories. These books are, even from the academic, scholarly point of view, these books are accepted, you see? There are so many scholars all over the world. Where have we got? Ralph Waldo Emerson. You see, there are so many. You'll find that Shaligram Shukla and Harvey Cox, they're famous figures. Thomas J. Hopkins, Chairman, Department of Religious Studies, Franklin and Marshall College. Emeritus Distinguished Professor of Philosophy, University of Southern California. Uh, Stilson Judah, Graduate Theological Union, Berkeley. Professor of Sociology, State University of New York. These are known figures in the academic world. These are big scholars. They're appreciating Prabhupada's books. So, if you like to be scholarly, you study Prabhupada's books. There's enough. You can spend your whole life, even if you don't. Now, of course, Prabhupada wanted this also, that his disciples would also write books, translate books. That's very good. We have an unlimited wealth. If you like to be scholarly, we have unlimited wealth. Prabhupada told one time that if you wanted to study the Vedic literature, if you started now, you, know, you went on all your life studying every day, 24 hours a day, you wouldn't come to the end. There's so much. So much is there. But all the essence has been captured in these books. Bhagavad Gita as it is, Srimad Bhagavatam, teachings of Lord Chaitanya, nectar of devotion. Even if you study these, so much. Can you come to the end? Sometimes people think, oh, Bhagavad Gita. Well, I read that. I understood that. You understood it? Really? You should, if you think you understood, you please read again. <laughs> and again. You can go, you read throughout your life. Prabhupada, he was reading all the, t- he was reading throughout his life, Bhagavad Gita. So, so much knowledge is here. This Bhagavad Gita, actually we should study this. Everyone should study. Even doesn't matter what other books you've studied, even if you're studying other books now, don't forget Bhagavad Gita as it is. This basic book of spiritual knowledge, which we need to read again and again and again and again, even if you read one shloka, two shlokas, in the beginning we should read a few times, several times through. Actually, in the early days of this movement, we didn't have so many books. Just there was first canto Prabhupada had published in India, and then there was second canto was coming out one chapter at a time in a paperback book. So mostly devotees are used to read Bhagavad Gita again and again. Prabhupada said that if you simply cram this Bhagavad Gita, you read again and again, that, that's enough to make you a good preacher. And practically, for all the points of preaching, and for all the basic points of philosophy which we have to understand, and our philosophy, we should understand the basic points very thoroughly. Very deeply and thoroughly. Don't try to go too much up unless there's a very solid base we should understand very solidly what is the basic philosophy. So, uh, for that we need to study Bhagavad Gita. Preaching, what preaching we're doing in the world mostly will be preaching. What are the points in Bhagavad Gita? What is material world? What is the difference between the body and the soul? That is the first thing which most people, even they don't understand this. Otherwise, everyone has got Dehatma Buddhi. I am this body. I am a Bengali. I am a Chinese. This Dehatma Buddhi. So first thing, this point is stressed again and again and again and again in Bhagavad Gita. This basic point, even superficially you will find people who are born in Hindu families or Buddhist families, superficially they accept that we are not this body. But practically speaking they don't understand. Otherwise why do they engage in sense gratification? It means they don't understand. So this basic point we should study very nicely from Bhagavad Gita and then we'll be able to preach to people. Or people come because of their Dehatma Buddhi, they think, well, I was born in a family which worships such and such a demigod. Even if you use the word demigod, sometimes they become upset. Just like they're telling, Tamil God. Murgan is a Tamil God. As if God is only for Tamils. Huh? Or they have different places, different incarnations. In Gujarat they have Swami Narayan, Gujarati incarnation of God. Only for the Gujaratis. Gujaratis, I'm a Gujarati. Gujaratis are special, so we have our own incarnation. <laughs> so, uh, this is all Dehatma Buddhi. I am this body. So this point, study, no. Then again they say, no, we, 
I don't think Krishna is supreme. You don't think Krishna is supreme? Then come, Bhagavad Gita. Immediately we can smash. You don't think Krishna is supreme? Do you believe in Bhagavad Gita? Yes, all right. Then what will you say? Krishna is supreme? Some verses. So many verses are there establishing Krishna is supreme. Matak paraktaram nanyat kinchirasti. No, nothing or no one is equal or greater than me, Krishna says. This is Bhagavad Gita. This is knowledge. This is what you need to know. You may study computer science. You may study physics, art, all these things. But this, this is the essential knowledge we need to know. Krishna is supreme. No one, nothing is greater than equal to him. Then, aham sarvasya prabhavoma tas sarvam prabhartate. Again, Everything is coming from me. Krishna is the source of everything. Again and again, these basic points, important philosophy. It's not that it's uh, just some very light thing. You see in the Bhagavatam also, it's being discussed now. What is the meaning of... People say, I think so-and-so is God. Or I, I think this, this demigod, this is God. Or we're all God. They don't even know what God means. What does God mean? What does the absolute truth mean? They have no idea. People are talking... So many people who... You'll find in India so many people they like to talk some different things about God. They have no idea even what the term means. Otherwise, how can they think that some someone producing ashes is God? Someone uh, throws some show some ashes in his hand, some dirty ashes, and that makes him God. This means they don't know what God means. You should know. Tasmat chastram pramanam te karya karya. This uh, in 16th chapter, Krishna says you should know. What is Shastra? What is said in Shastra? You should know that and follow that. So especially as devotees, we should know this very well. What do we have to know? We have to know Shastra. Other things we may know. Other things we may engage our abilities in Krishna's service. That is very nice. But our central, basic, essential knowledge is knowledge of Bhagavad Gita as it is. Then when we are a little fixed in that, study Srimad Bhagavatam. Study Isha Try to understand these books. Again, don't think that simply studying, that's all. That's all I'll do. Don't become a bookworm. Someone who lives inside the book and simply eats his way through the book and makes holes in it. No. One has practical application. That term was used for Tapan Mishra, one of the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Same word in Bengali, boy poka. Means, exactly means bookworm. So he was simply a bookworm. And reading so many books, I think this, and I think that, I have a new theory. But he didn't, what is the actual point of all? He didn't know. He didn't understand. So, reading these books means that when we study and understand, then we must come to the conclusion, same conclusion as Krishna presented to Arjuna, which Arjuna accepted, Karishe Bhachanam Tava, I'll do what you say. We have to engage in Krishna's service. This study means that we understand I'm not this body, I'm the eternal servant of Krishna who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, my duty is to serve Him. Study is part of service. There are so many. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. There are so many things to do in Krishna's service. But to understand why we are doing what we are doing, we should study this philosophy very carefully, very nicely, become fixed. Prabhupada used to talk of fixed up devotees. Means, uh, what is the, the term is given? Stitidhir Muni. One whose intelligence is fixed. So our intelligence should be fixed in understanding Krishna through Shastra, through Parampara, not that we just pick up a whole bunch of books and we go out on the street in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is a dangerous place from that point of view. Because you'll find so many people, they've all got so many theories about so many things. Yes, yes, your Guru Maharaj, he explained very nicely, but I think he was a little bit mistaken on this point. I think I can explain it better. No, we're not going to listen. You don't know better than Prabhupada. Prabhupada is our Acharya. He brought the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He he was receiving the mercy from all the Acharyas. And someone who's sitting at home in Vrindavan and drinking tea and wants to explain better than you cannot explain better than you. That should be understood as an axiomatic fact. 
So we have to follow Guru Sadhu Shastra. Then we will get knowledge. Yasya Deve Prabhaktiya Yata Deve Tata Guru Tasyaite Katita Hyata Prakashante Bhagavan. Simply, we have faith. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, who is the Guru who is giving that knowledge? He is uh, also full faith in Him. Simply this. And all the imports of Vedic knowledge will be revealed. Otherwise, you can study for millions of lifetimes. You may not come to the point of understanding. Ahunam janmanam ante jnanavam vangrapantite vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sudulaba. Simply by studying, 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 if you don't come to the natural conclusion that now I should surrender to Krishna, then you may go through many lifetimes like that. And one person after study for many, many lifetimes, samahatma sudulaba. Some rare person may actually come to the conclusion that what I've been studying for all these lifetimes, I'm supposed to surrender to Krishna. So even if you don't go through many, many lifetimes, if you just come to this point, you pick up Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita as it is, and he says, everyone should surrender to Krishna. And you say, all right, I'll do that. Then immediately you surpass. You don't have to do millions of lifetimes of study. You already came to the conclusion. You came to the point. Uh, just... I was asking that question, that if someone has knowledge but doesn't apply it, is it useful? The answer is no. Even if you have so, Similarly, someone may have so much apparent knowledge, he may be a so-called big, big scholar, but if he doesn't know who is Krishna and how to surrender to him, or even if he knows theoretically but not actually, then uh, what is the use? Better that you clean out the garbage for Krishna. If you come to that, then... You're cleaning for Krishna with full faith that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You'll get all knowledge. So, practical service, side by side, we should study these books, become convinced, and then we'll know everything. Just like Prabhupada used to say, I'm going all over the world, I'm preaching Krishna consciousness, I'm meeting scientists, philosophers, politicians, so many different people, intellectuals, university professors, I never studied all their philosophies. How can I speak? Because I studied Bhagavad Gita. Because he's fixed in that knowledge. You'll find especially those walks which are recorded that life comes from life books. People are presenting different scientific theories. Prabhupada, of course, he was a professional chemist. But he wasn't very deeply into, in his household life, he was a professional chemist. But he never studied Big Bang Theory, Evolutionary Theory, all these things. But immediately they presented some point Immediately Prabhupada would find out what is the defect. They say that in the future they will produce life. Immediately Prabhupada would find out what is the defect. In the future. Just see what rascals. They can't do it now, but they say in the future. Just like Prabhupada immediately points out. Someone says, he goes into a shop, jewelry shop. I'd like to, yes, I'd like this diamond, the diamond ring. This is $10,000. And I'd like this necklace. This is $50,000. And you write out a check. How much does that come to? One million dollars. Okay, write a check for one million dollars. Okay, and just checking out, what's the date? Oh, the date is for five years in advance. No, yeah, well, it's supposed to, it's okay, in five years time I'll have a million dollars. So you take Who will accept? No one will accept it. It's not a good trick. It doesn't work. The scientists are saying, in the future, immediately Prabhupada catches. What is the defect? So like this, all these different points. You'll see, because he was linked with Krishna in transcendental knowledge. Full faith in Krishna and studied deeply in Shastra with the aim to preach Krishna consciousness. Therefore Krishna gave him all intelligence. So Krishna will give us also. As we surrender, that much Krishna will give us intelligence to understand this philosophy of Krishna consciousness and present it to others. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Yes. Uh, a glorified guru uh, has to come from the parambara. But uh, from uh, one person from parambara doesn't make him any bona fide. I don't know if you have expressed your question clearly. Um, a person in uh, parambara. I th- what I think you're, you're saying is that just because someone's initiated by a bona fide guru yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that he's bona fide himself. Yeah. Someone may be initiated by a bona fide guru, but if he doesn't exactly follow, then he's no longer in parampara. 
Some may say, well, my guru is Prabhupada, so therefore I can become a guru. So uh, I'm, I was, he was, I'm initiated by Prabhupada, so, uh, you know, I smoke 20 cigarettes a day, but, you know, my guru is Prabhupada. You may find someone's initiated by Prabhupada, but he's not following, therefore he's not fit to be guru. We find there's one upper sampradaya, bogus, so-called sampradaya. Their followers chant some bogus mantra, which we can hear all the time here. Nitai go, radhe, sham, etc. So, who, who made up this imaginary chant was the follower of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And, but then he had made this up, then he became a non-follower. So, being in Parampara doesn't simply mean that at some point in time you sit in a ceremony, and then you know you got your stamp. Now I'm bona fide, so now I can go out and do it, I can teach whatever nonsense I like. I'm a proper disciple, therefore, whatever I say is, is perfect. No! Whatever you say is perfect if you say exactly what Prabhupada says. If you deviate an inch, then you're no longer in the parampara. You're out. Anything else? Any other question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. In the course of preaching, like, some people ask this question, that, uh, how do we know that this particular edition of Bhagavad Gita is a bona fide? How can we believe this? There are so many editions. Then you have to see what is the message of Gita? Therefore, it's given with word for word translation, followed by translation. And at the very beginning of the Gita, Prabhupada presents why this Bhagavad Gita is bona fide as compared to others. He starts off by saying, Prabhupada starts off by saying that why has he made this Bhagavad Gita translation? He said, because he was asked by an American lady to recommend a copy. And he said, even there are over 300 editions, but I couldn't recommend any edition to her. Because all of them, the commentator has expressed his own opinions without touching the spirit of Bhagavad Gita as it is. Then he says, actually this introduction to Bhagavad Gita is wonderful. If you study, you, you, this introduction you should read again and again. You'll get, you, then you can really understand Bhagavad Gita as it is. Prabhupada gives an overview of the whole Gita. So, Prabhupada presents in a very logical way why this Bhagavad Gita should be studied. So, he says that uh, the Bhagavad Gita has to be understood in the spirit that it was presented. In other words, Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita for a particular purpose. It wasn't, Prabhupada is explaining that Krishna didn't speak the Gita simply so that everyone can jump on it, rip it to pieces and make their own interpretation. But he spoke it with a specific purpose. Therefore, we have to understand what is that specific purpose. The Bhagavad Gita was presented in a certain spirit. What is that spirit? Uh, he probably gives the example that just like you go to a doctor, you have to take the medicine as given by the doctor. So, in the same way, Bhagavad Gita is presented in a certain way. What is the certain way that Krishna is speaking to Arjuna with the idea that Arjuna should understand and accept what he's saying, not mentally speculate on it, it's being presented, presenting Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So you have to accept it in that spirit. And Prabhupada says, at least theoretically, in the beginning you may not accept it, but at least theoretically you have to be ready to accept. Then you can begin to understand. So if you see, like I was saying, there's the word-for-word -word translation and verse-by-verse -verse translation. So Prabhupada is presenting as Krishna has presented it, in the same way. And if you see, actually, what is Krishna presenting? He is presenting... Bhakti. Yogi nama pisarve sham madgate nantaratmana shradhavan bhajate yamam same yukta tamamata. Of all yogis, the best is the bhakti yogi. And at the end of Gita, Krishna says, Sarvago yatamam bhuya shinumri paramam vacha. Yateham priyamanaya bhakshami hitakamyaya. At the end of Gita, after going through so many things, Krishna says, Now I'm going to speak to you the most confidential of all knowledge. Uh, listen to my topmost information. I'm speaking to th this for you for your benefit. What is that? Nammana bhavamad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskuru. Always think of me, become my devotee, bow down to me, worship me. This way you will come to me. I promise you this because you're my dear friend. Then, giving up all other things, surrender to me. So, you have to take Bhagavad Gita. That's why it's Bhagavad Gita as it is. So, if you're a little doubtful, then you study this, you study how Gita is being presented. 
words. Why Krishna spoke to Arjuna? See the words. Then understand it in that context. In that context it has been presented. And therefore, even though there were more than 300 editions of Gita in the Western world, uh, none of them had become a devotee. By reading them, no one had become a devotee. But after Bhagavad Gita as it is was presented, so many people became devotees. They got the result of reading Bhagavad Gita. Therefore you can understand, this really is Bhagavad Gita as it is. Hmm. And when I first saw Bhagavad Gita as it is, I was surprised. Why is it called Bhagavad Gita as it is? I thought it was a very strange title. Because it's, it's just like when you go to buy anything in the shop, you don't just say, uh, give me some rice, some real rice. <laughs> Not plastic rice. I don't want plastic rice, give me some real rice. Or on the box it says, this, this is a TV, a real TV, not a children's play TV. And naturally, then it's Bhagavad Gita, it's Bhagavad Gita. But most of the editions of Bhagavad Gita are not Bhagavad Gita. Huh? They're Bhagavad Gita as it is not. Bhagavad Gita, not Bhagavad Gita. It's only, only the outside wrapping is Bhagavad Gita. And inside, it's poison. It's not Yatte Hampriyamanaya Vakshyami Hitakamaya. It's Vakshyami, whoever is giving their interpretation, Ahita Kameya, because they want to damage you and spoil your. You have a spiritual inclination, therefore you're approaching Bhagavad Gita. So therefore, because they're. I'm speaking to you this because I'm your very dear friend. Because I, uh, I'm, this, these people, they should. But I'm, we're speaking this because we are your worst enemy. We're going to, in the name of Bhagavad Gita, we're going to send you to hell. It's not to Krishna we should surrender, but to the unborn eternal within Krishna. And if you think this is Bhagavad Gita, then you become more envious and more sinful and you go to hell. So this we should understand. What is the context? See. Then you study. That, we're talking about Bhagavad Gita, that's not something that just by, just by examining the substance, what does the cover look like, what, is, what kind of quality paper they're using, you won't understand what is bona fide Bhagavad Gita by that. You have to see how it's presented. Another test. This Bhagavad Gita is presented in an unbroken parampara. The same message has been given since time immemorial. It's not that someone picked up Bhagavad Gita and th- he just did from his own imagination some interpretation. Of course, there are others who claim, just like the Mayavadis, they claim uh, along those who are what you might call bona fide Mayavadis or sampradayak. Mayavadis, those in the line of Shankaracharya, they claim uh, long-standing parampara also. Any other question? Mm. In the Bhagavad Gita there is one shloka, Sri Krishna said that those who worship your impersonal, absolute, they will also come to me. So, actually, what does the Sri Krishna mean uh, when he spoke like that? So, which is this group of people? Are there Mayavadis? Those who worship the impersonal absolute, they also come to Krishna after a long time and with much trouble. If they stick to the path, they may come to them. Bahunam Janmanamante, Gyanavangman Prabhadyate, Vasudeva Saramati, Samahat Nasudulama. They may come after many births with much trouble. And then again, as long as you are not reached the stage of perfection, there's always the danger of falling away. So they're in more danger of falling away. What yeah. would be the destination if they are if they are Russian, because if they are Russian person, yeah. where they will finish? In Brahma Jyoti? Uh... No, if they, are, if they are followers of the path of impersonalism, if they are Brahmavadis, impersonalists. Yes. Now, one thing is, modern day Mayavadis, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has noted, Mayavadi Krishna Aparadhi. Those who, are, those who follow uh, Shankaracharya's Advaitva, so Keval Advaitva, they actually become envious of Krishna. But there are other impersonalists who simply due to lack of knowledge or understanding or realization, they, they are Brahmavadis, means they're impersonalists, but they're not envious of Krishna. And examples are Shukadev Goswami, Bilbamangal Thakur, four Kumaras, who when they came in contact with Krishna consciousness, then they took it up very easily. So such Brahmavadis, if they come if they're actually advanced and they come